I really appreciate Todd kind of going through, because he's kind of got a unique area, and he's kind of on the forefront now of this, these grass species, glyphosate's not doing much with. And uh, it, it really adds another layer of difficulty on our any <coughs> situation. So uh, uh, kind of the status of, uh, of the dicamba situation is, is akin to a bad spaghetti western, even though I thought this was a pretty good spaghetti western. Uh, because we definitely had, had some good, and Todd talked about a lot of the good is, is the weed control. Uh, we definitely had some bad, and the ugly has been, ugh, it's been a lot, a lot of things. A lot of y'all know with all the fussing between neighbors. So kind of on the meeting circuit, Drake Copeland, he's working on a PhD with me. We've kind of been good cop, bad cop, but I've been the bad cop. Uh, I let him talk about the weed control and stuff, and I talked about the stewardship part. And we'll, we'll get into that. So this last year, uh, we went, Pretty heavy into extend. Larry, I, this was my best guess for us on soybeans. I, I think we were in that realm. Um, you might have had that many. I think we were a little, a little less than that. I don't think we had quite that much penetration last year. Maybe maybe half. But I thought for sure we were a good half. But, yeah. you know, you get over here in this part of the world, right, Elizabeth, and it's like, it seemed like it was 80 in some places. Well, there's a definite <laughs> start of Jackson to go toward the Mississippi Sip. River, and it just keeps increasing. Right? I mean, that's, that's where the demand was for us. So. And, and, the, and Todd talked about the weed control. Weed control is good, and that was really good. Uh, this was the bad. Um, is, is it basically swamped most of the Department of Agriculture's folks to even, even field these calls? And it was a national issue from Minnesota to Mississippi and Nebraska to Ohio. And I saw a recent survey done by the University of Nebraska, and, and, and what they showed in that is only one in 10 of the actual drip complaints <coughs> Uh, got read, got sent to the Department of Agriculture uh, at Nebraska. Um, so these numbers are way below what was actually happening in the field. And this is just our best guess, and that's the reason this came out, is just trying to capture some of that so we, we at least know where we are. Maybe we can figure out how to go forward. Um, but that was kind of our best guess estimate of where we are. So, and I'm not telling you, you all know this, it, it, it's unlike anything we've ever seen uh, just this past two years. It's the only time I've ever seen it where you see this landscape level movement. Um, you know, you're standing in a section of soybeans, three different farmers, they're all Liberty Link, and as far as you can see, it's like it's been sprayed. Uh, it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. And most of you all saw it this past year. June, April, June drift was bad, July was the worst. Uh, it, it seemed like it went farther to me. Uh, had a lot of issues, and we were spraying big pigweed late. Now, there's about three things bad that's happening in this picture, right? <laughs> number one, you've already lost yield. Number two, you're going to select for resistance right away. And number three, uh, Tom Mueller's got some pretty good data that when you're spraying foot-tall pigweed, two-foot-tall pigweed, you increase the level of volatility of dicamba by an order of magnitude. So you've got, you got a lot more drift potential. Exactly. The boom height to get over it. Forget the 24 inches. And you're already off label. The thing is, we're hitting these fields multiple times with those July applications. And that was a killer. Uh, this, was, this was one of the ones we ran. Um, and, you know, this only boot top tall in July 1, and they were planted May 4th. This was one of the fields we ran. I know this field got hit three times because I got called to it three times. Uh, early June. I went back out in late June. I just love it. Got to go back out in the middle of July. And, and uh, Drake and I happened to run by there one day. Is it uh, Lake County? It's Lake County. Lake yeah. So these are extend beans back here. That's where he pulled these up. These Liberty Link beans were over here. Um, and it stomped on them hard. Did you hear them from Greg and those guys up there yield estimates in terms of how much they thought that impact? I mean, that was the hot spot up there in that corner. What sort of yield losses? Have you heard it yeah, from this is where I'm hearing is is in that 10 to 20 percent range. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would, have thought it would have been more. I would have too. But you know, we we've been just absolutely the garden of Eden. I mean, we got in every rain. And you talk to some of our colleagues. Uh, Bob and I talked to to our colleagues to the north. Uh, you get Minnesota and North Dakota. They they were dry. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't recover like ours recovered. Well, he was great. It was a little drier up there in Lake County than the rest of West Tennessee was. I actually thought that was probably going to magnify the losses up there because he did miss some rains up there that a lot of the other counties got. So. Yeah, it, it, yeah, he did. He did. Um, but no, they they come out but pretty good. Where there's 
no partial credit is on these other crops. And this is where the real rub is going to be this next year. I, I called, got called to this field um, in Middle Tennessee. When you get these cobra-headed leaf tobacco, you're done. You've lost the contract. $10,000 an acre. Um, uh, you know, the Farm Bureau in, Insurance called on this one. Uh, we, we, you know, if we, hit, we drift on much more of this, folks, it is for sure done. We cannot be drifting on any more vineyards particularly state representatives' vineyards. Um, that, we, we, we do that again, particularly a little earlier than we did this time. Um, man, it's, it, it, it's going to hit it. Homeowners. I think I, maybe I ran more homeowner calls than a lot of folks did. Uh, they wore out some of our county agents, that's for sure. Um, uh, that was in some, some of these folks uh, had thousands of dollars worth of landscaping. It's why, why did my hydrangeas not bloom this year? And if my best, this is an election year, right? These folks vote. These folks contribute to campaign contributions. Uh, what could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? So I, th this, I think, is going to probably be more of an issue this year than actually soybeans, because I think we're mostly going to be soybeans. This is getting back to your, you know, there's no way to really measure this. You know, a lot of folks will say, well, I made good beans. You know, they were 60 bushel. Well, yeah. Maybe they would have made 70. I don't know. Nobody knows. There's no way to measure it. So, but a lot of farmers thought they didn't have any yield loss, but some where they got hit multiple times, like in Lake County and Gibson and some places, um, thought 10 to 20 percent. I did a survey, and I've showed this before. Um, both our county agents and retailers, kind of what they thought was the cause of a lot of the drift. Uh, I really, going into the year, I thought spray equipment contamination was going to be the big thing. <coughs> Most of them thought not so much. Uh, dicamba misapplication, uh, you know, just not following the, the rules, is, uh, either not using the nozzles or just out there when it's wind. Is, I, I thought we'd have more of that. Most folks didn't, didn't think so. Dicamba volatilization, <laughs> county agents thought that was a big part of it. And when I walked these fields, that's what I thought as well. But the retailers thought it was a good bit of it. Spraying into temperature inversions, most everybody thought that was part of it. And actually, dicamba volatilizing into a temperature inversion. <laughs> And then using the legal dicamba, I thought this was interesting. We've got two different numbers here. They're pretty different. And I don't know if they both can't be right. I'm confident the retailers know what they, what they sold or what they lost in sales. The, the devil's in the detail. When was it sprayed? Um, I, nobody knows for sure. But when I walk these fields with these growers, my sense is a lot of them were spraying it close to burn down in April and May and not in June and July when it was moving all over. That's just my opinion. Um, Take it for what it's worth. Uh, there was a, another really good survey done by up in Illinois, the Illinois Fertilizer and Chemical Association. Uh, they represent all the retailers up in Illinois. Um, and one of the things, that I looked at their survey, and their survey looked a lot like mine as far as the bell-shaped curve and what the causes were. Uh, but one of the interesting things there, did you see dicamba injury symptoms on non-DT soybeans even when the wind was not blowing toward the field during the time of application? Now, up in Illinois, about 80% of the post applications are done by the retailers. Um, number one, they use Ingenia or Extended Max. They're not going to use anything else. It's going to cut into their business. Um, and they're about as good a trained as what, you know, what we're going to have out there. Um, but 85% of them saw it moving against the wind the day they sprayed. 85%. Uh, I thought that was pretty striking. This was really striking. If you look down into that survey, most stated that 50% of the non-DT soybeans near an extend field that received a dicamba application showed injury. And that's in Illinois. And they weren't supposed to have as big of issues as we did this past year. We did a lot of education. Um, this is actually dated. We, did, we had 5,600 applicators take a 30-minute stewardship vigil this last year. Uh, I put blogs out there. They were accessed 3,600 times. We did. 16 in-season YouTube videos accessed over 13,000 times. Monsanto and BASF, and some of them are in this room, did a tremendous job doing, <laughs> doing stewardship uh, training. I thought it was all good, and it was repeated. These guys got it multiple times, and yet we had lots of issues. Larry, I mean, can you go back to your previous slide? Sure. 4,600 are those the people that got the license? Certified applicators. Certified applicators. Mm -hmm. But how many of those have guys working under them? That were running the rigs. That's what they That's did. The ones that got it. So, did they 
I mean, do you think all those guys showed up at those training sessions? Most of them, no. Most of them not. Oh yeah, most of them did. Cause most well, did. yeah, most of them did. That was long in Arkansas. Yeah. Actually, if you were driving the rig, you yeah. had to go through the online training. Yeah. We did the online. Okay. In effect. Yeah, most of them. Most of them Good. were not all of them, but most of them. Because we're not going to be training a lot more than what we trained last year, this year. So it must have been. Well, this was a dated number. It's actually 5,600. We're, we're close to 6,000. That's a lot of folks. So this year, this is my best guess. We're going to be about 80 percent extend. Larry, you might tell me different, uh, uh, but I. Well, it may be happy, but I don't know if it's going to be that. Odd. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Even in Middle Tennessee. But like you said, the issue still. Rose Gardens. Oh yeah, yeah. Cypress that's the trees. Are that's the thing. I, I really think in the mid south we're going to have fewer issues. Uh, oh, I, I think we will. Yeah, it's just uh, the extraneous stuff outside. The yeah, field. yeah. That uh, can still kill us. It can, and that's where I get the you know the, yeah, the tobacco. The tobacco that those twenty percent of soybeans that aren't extend. Yikes! They are in harm's way. It, I left one thing out that I wished I would have told. If, if, if we could train people to communicate, again, I live where I work. Got a lady that I know, she's a master gardener. I mean, just crazy about it. If you want to spray, the wind wasn't even blowing, but we went and talked, drove to their house, me and the farmer, we're spraying for them, talked to them, called her in the morning we were going to spray. She took sheets out there, covered her tomato plants and all that up. We sprayed it. Told her to wait till the end of the day. The end of the day, she uncovered. She was more than happy to do it. Well, she owned the farm. Yeah. More than happy to do it. It, it. it just communicating to me is the is the one thing. And I mean, I work with farmers my whole life. They're independent. But if we could communicate with more people, I think we could cure a a, a, a lot. But you know, fear of trying to you know everybody knows now what we're doing. Maybe Memphis News and everything else. Yeah. So. We, we got a fellow in Crockett County that sits on his backyard with a shotgun every time you spray across the road. I, I need you to come talk. Oh, to that's me. Oh, that's oh, Crockett oh, County. Oh, <laughs> that's Crockett County. So, and I, I don't. I think this is this is going to be the tail of the tape of whether the EPA approves it for 19, and it's going to be. The, I think it's going to be the Midwest. Half the soybeans in Illinois and Iowa will be extended, and therefore half will not. Every other field particularly be drifted on. There's 22 million acres, and they had a lot of issues last year. A lot of issues. The estimate this year is 40 million, but that, that's across all brands. Everybody, so everything. Got, so out of what 85 or 90? Yeah. Well, I know like Gromart FS, the big retailer in Illinois, what was it, 80, Drake, what was it, 80% of their sales were, they were extended right now? They yeah. booked soybean yeah. sales. It's going to be big. And, and I think that's where, where you got the most trouble of going. With that, I'm going to switch it over, and Drake's going to talk about weed control and cotton um, and some things Wait, to think do about. Do you have a plan if they take away that game? A plan B? <laughs> I mean, this is the last year that we've got it on label, technically, right? Yeah. yeah. If we're not allowed to renew it, is there a plan in place for it? Well, in cotton, you got a list. Um, I think all these seed companies are going to have to have a plan B. Whether they will or not, I don't know. So triple stack beans start showing up next year. So that's it's going to be a small quantity. So we're putting Liberty into Monsanto beans. And Further down the road, and another couple of years past that, HPVD chemistry is going to be there. So there's going to be some solutions down the road, but next year there won't be enough triple stack beans from us. Dow will have triple stack. They'll probably get their approvals. They'll have triple stack they would by then. as well. So there will be some other solutions there, but the quantities won't be there in 19 if we lose the dicamba technology. The quantities of beans that all have liberty around it won't, won't be enough to probably satisfy it. Uh, we're going to be By 2020, ready. we'll be in better shape. Yeah. So, just got to get through the next couple of years and hopefully have some options. 